Rarely are small things so much fun to play with. Thanks to CDKeySales.com for sponsoring this video. I don't know how you sleep at night with that Activate Windows thing in the bottom corner of your screen. It's time to activate Windows, and that's how I actually activated Windows on the Udo Bolt that you're going to see in this video. So head over to CDKeySales.com and use coupon code TECH18 to take an additional 18% off, bringing Windows 10 Pro down to around 14 bucks. It'll also bring down the price of Windows 10 Home and all the various different versions of Microsoft Office so you can get the programs you need for a really low price. Once you apply the coupon code, just go to your purchase orders and you can see your CD key. Then hit the start button, type activation settings, click on that. There'll be a button to either change your product key or activate Windows. Click on that and then just paste this key in and you're good to go. So I've used them about six or seven times to grab Windows keys. It's really easy. So again, coupon code TECH18 at cdkeysales.com. Get your Windows activated. And now to our regularly scheduled program. This is the Udo Bolt. There's two different flavors depending on how much speed you need. You can get the Ryzen embedded V1605B, which is what we have right here. And then if you just need something to stream media and not do any heavy lifting or whatever, you can get the V1202B. So this one goes all the way up to 3.6 on the boost. The base clock is two gigahertz. So this is a quad core processor, eight threads. So remember when back in the day when quad cores with eight threads were really expensive, huge systems, and now they're tiny, fit in the palm of your hand and can do a lot. It's sort of a mix between an HTPC and a hobby board, but they advertise that you can also play AAA games with this because it does have the Ryzen embedded GPU. And with this model we have here, we've got the Vega 8 graphics. Um, it also does H.265 decoding and everything. And when I say that it's like partly hobby board, it's, I'm not just saying that because of the size. Look at the side right here. Those are Arduino hookups, so you can plug up some expansion boards and stuff like that. If you're someone who's into the Groove system, well, right here we've got some plugs for Groove system stuff. Now, if you're not familiar with that, I put it up on the screen right here, so we can take a look at what is the Groove system. It's mainly something that will work together with your Arduinos to allow you to hook up sensors, like barometers, temperature sensors, gas gauges. You can do all kinds of things. There are so many different uh, attachments you can get to plug into the groove right there. So get your groove on. And then there's a SATA port on this side. Also, we've got uh, USB on the back right here. We've got a few of those, and that's going to be good because there's only two USB 3 ports on the front. So if you need more USB, you're going to need to get some sort of a hub or something like that. But with these USB-C, no problem. Just plug in a hub and, and go. Now then we have two HDMI right here. That's an SP diff audio output. Plus, I want to mention on the internal here, there's a couple of preamp uh, audio ports on there. So if you're really into audio, you got that. And then we've got our Ethernet over here and the power spot. And then on the front, you have your headphone jack. So just completely loaded plus USB. And there's also uh, a little infrared sensor right there for remotes and stuff. So the board itself is tiny, but it is loaded with features. What features? Somebody over there. It was me. So let's talk about storage first. Despite the size, you have a few different options. So we have a couple M.2 ports, uh, one on the bottom that we're going to be using for Wi-Fi. So it's really easy. Just plug that one in on the bottom, your Wi-Fi, and plug in your antennas, and you can put them on the inside. They uh, give you some antennas that will adhere to the inside of the case. And then uh, over on the other side of the board, we have an NVMe M.2 slot, which is what we're going to be using here with a Samsung 970. So we're going to put that in there to get extreme speed, but you can you can populate both of those. And then if you need even more, there's a 32 gigabyte soldered onboard MMC, plus there's a SATA on the back of this. And what's really cool about that is you can install an OS to any one of those. Um, and if you're installing it to the SATA on the back, you can install several different operating systems, several different SATA devices and then just plug up whatever OS you want to this and go. So you could have multiple different ones just like shuffling cards and plugging in different OSs. Why not? As far as the memory goes, well, it can handle up to 32 gigabytes of DDR4 memory in their SO DIMM slots. 2400 megahertz is what they recommend. Uh, and they have validated the Transcend memory so far on this small team, you know, so they've got those validated. So we're going to go with two 16 gigabyte sticks of Transcend memory so that we can have a lot of desk space to do stuff. The audio codec on the inside is the Realtek 888S. Officially, it supports Windows 10. Um, it also supports any 64-bit Linux uh, operating system. So I wanted to really test this thing out. So I decided to install Ubuntu because that's what they have a picture of on their website. Plus, I think a lot of people uh, out there are going to be running Linux on this because 
Linux is free, right? I mean, you can get Windows uh, for 15, 20 bucks these days on one of these key websites, but Linux is free. So I installed Linux first, and then I'm gonna install Windows second and see how it runs. Um, but I forgot how much I hate the interface of Ubuntu, and I thought maybe with 20 that updated it, but I just installed the vanilla Ubuntu, and I wish I installed Plasma something else instead, but we're gonna go with what we have on here. Uh, and I ran Geekbench, you can see the results on the screen. Uh, pretty impressive, it's about as fast as half the computers that have been tested. Uh, and the size, it's probably smaller than 95% of the computers or more than have been tested, maybe 98 or 99% of the computers. So for its size, it punches way above its weight. Um, I found that multitasking was very possible with that you know, nice RAM and also the fact that it's a uh, you know, quad core with four threads and can turbo up to 3.6 gigahertz. So multi-threading, I mean, the multi-threading really helps when it comes to multitasking. And now let's talk about gaming. Because first off, I wanted to try gaming on Linux, and they said it worked with AAA games. So the first thing I did was install Doom 2016 because that works with Linux, and where the hell is our port of Doom Eternal? Id, come on, where the hell is it? But Tesla says we can't. We'll talk to Zenimax. Maybe they'll say you can for the 12 people on Linux who are dying to play your damn games. Anyway, um... At 720p, it was playable on low settings, but I would not call this ready for AAA gaming or, you know, like really fancy uh, VR or anything like that. It'll work with some of the lower quality VR games, but not like your modern AAA stuff. Um, and I thought maybe it's just because the, the Ryzen drivers are not that, uh, I guess, ready for the newest version of Ubuntu. Maybe that's it. So I was like, all right, let's 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 leave it alone but 1080p was like at 25 fps not playable 720p was barely playable around 30 but it dropped below 30 too many times for my for my personal comfort so not incredible uh, opening up dusk or some indie games and that sort of thing dusk was well over 60 fps completely playable so this thing is going to be amazing for indie gaming um and also retro gaming just all day long even some emulators will work just fine on here had a lot of fun playing those games and I highly recommend using Linux for that. Otherwise, if you uh, really wanted to go crazy, you could install your favorite media management software. I actually like using Plex, and since there's not a really good package of, of Plex that's made by Plex, uh, you can install some, some third-party uh, packages and get Plex up and running on this. It can really handle media. 4K media, you can skip around, no problem. Go over the beginning, go to the end. It doesn't care. It, it really, really can handle media. H.265, H.264, whatever. It, it'll it, it just runs it's super fast in that regard all right so linux i mean you guys can do whatever you want with it and i'm sure you have a million more options and a million more ideas in your head but now let's talk about windows because I, I put windows 10 on here to see how that ran first thing i did was run passmark um ran geekbench on linux ran passmark over here to see and it's right where i thought it would be the 46 percentile so again about fast as half the computers out there, but you know, smaller than 98% of them. And there you can see the Passmark rating. If you want to go and grab Passmark, run it just to see what your current computer is. And I'm curious in the comments, how many of you have a computer that's way bigger, but slower than this? Let me know in the comments. As far as gaming goes on uh, Windows 10 with this, I was able to install Doom Eternal, which I think is a little more optimized um, Vulkan and uh, got that running. So at 720p, I was running about 45 FPS and able to go through the fights. You could do the entire Dance of Death without any problem. I mean, Doom Eternal is basically murder gymnastics, right? It's like the combat system, and it works. It feels fluid. It feels good. Um, it's not as good as playing it at 144 hertz or 240 hertz for a lot of you gamers out there. But you can play this just fine at 720 on lower settings. If you turn it up to 1080, again, it drops below uh, what I would consider to be playable. And this game is extremely optimized. So I don't think it's really fair to um, say that this is going to be good enough for all modern AAA games. It's not. It's just not fast enough. The Vega GPU is fast, but even at 720p, I mean, a lot of times when you're playing AAA games, you're buying them for that ridiculous fidelity and because you care about graphics as much, if not more, than gameplay. You want to be wowed and have like, oh my god, there's smoke coming out of the smoke! And there's reflections even coming off the reflections! Like, that's what you like about gaming, I guess. If you care about that, you're probably going to spend a ton of money on a GPU and throw it on your system and be happy. So, this is not going to be for those people. Again, indie gaming and retro gaming, 
perfect on this, especially like, well, I mean, some indie games are like AAA games these days, but you know what I mean. So let's talk about what I, um, I don't like about this. And mainly it's the noise because the fan has the same issue that you get uh, with a lot of Ryzen processors where the fan will ramp up and down depending on what the frequency of the CPU is doing. So you'll have this whole like vacuum cleaner on, vacuum cleaner off, vacuum cleaner on. I would rather it just stay on and you can you can go in and control the fan. So that's a very minor gripe, but just as it is out of the box, the fan will go and then stop and then and so you'll be sitting there being like, shut up, shut up, man. So that's weird. And also there's a slight bit of um, coil whine when this is turned off and it's not a constant coil whine because if it's asleep or whatever, there's an LED inside that kind of turns on and off. And as that fluctuates, there is a very pronounced, somewhat loud coil whine. And I'm not sure if that's gonna be on every version, but I'm tempted to open this up and put some hot glue on whatever capacitor is whining. Cause man, I tell you, this thing is just singing while it's off and it's very noticeable if I'm across the room and this is sitting on a desk you can hear like a hiss then no hiss hiss then no hiss so that's my only real complaint is just those the couple of sound things if you're using headphones or if this is in a different room where you're you know if you're using it for a home theater system you're not going to notice any of that stuff I don't think I mean if it's right here on the desk it's very apparent if it's not right here on the desk it's not that big of a deal because it's not that loud I just I'm very sensitive to noise, people. So that, but that, see, I'm, I'm stretching here. I'm like looking for reasons to complain. Otherwise, the case that they've included with this is steel. It's sturdy. Uh, there's room for expansion. You can put some stuff down here on the bottom, some extra boards or whatever. So even though it's small, there's actually room to put more things in there. Um, and this is completely optional. You don't have to use the case, but you're probably going to want it just for the power button and stuff like that. Um, otherwise, this is an extremely solid. Uh, machine. I'm kind of curious as to what I could do with it if I had Arduinos around. I'm not a huge uh, hobby enthusiast. I'm more of a, a gamer and a, with hopefully a game maker and a music maker and that sort of thing at this point. So if you are someone who likes to tinker, this could be like the ultimately powerful, most ridiculous hobby board ever. Plus, it's also a full-on Ryzen system that can do all kinds of things. So it, it'll fit into a lot of different uh, circumstances and you can do a lot with it. Uh, I'm curious as to what you might do with this in the comments. So let me know how you would use your Udo Bolt when you grab one. And let me know which flavor you're going to get, the faster version or the uh, slightly less fast version. See, there's no slow version there. It's fast or slightly less fast. So let me know which one you guys are going to get, if you're going to get one. Now, as far as the Arduino compatibility, I don't really use these very much, but I can read the specs off the screen. It's the AT Mega 32U4. Uh, and that's the compatible microcontroller there. Oh, the other thing I would really like is maybe one more standard type A USB port on this board somewhere because there were a lot of times I, I didn't have a hub uh, anywhere handy. There were a lot of times when I was having to unplug a mouse and a keyboard so I could plug up a USB drive to this. And that was a little frustrating, but if you're gonna get this, I highly, highly, highly recommend getting a USB hub for this as well because two type A ports is not enough for most people. The other option that some people I've seen do is to get a wireless mouse keyboard combo with one wireless port that plugs in there and that'll open up um, that other USB port. So that's another option as well, but just make sure that whenever you're grabbing your stuff, you are aware of the type A USB situation. So all in all, it's a beast. I do recommend it. Um, possibly not for everything they've advertised on their site with AAA games and everything, but for most people, it's gonna be a really fast HTPC and a beast of an Arduino machine. Plus, you can do all kinds of different things with it. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Head over to epicpants.com, grab a t-shirt, mouse, hat, or a pair of dentures autographed by me. I will, I will punch someone and take their dentures and autograph them and send them to you if the price is right. See you guys in the comments.